everybody uh welcome back to end time of fly fishing uh back on the water and i got drew bone with me again and um yeah it's gonna be a pretty cool uh episode i had one of um the viewers uh comment michael wimberly if you're out there listening uh you know who you are and uh you had commented uh on the last video in regards to whether or not we actually fish smaller uh patterns on this river and um truth be told no <laughs> i ne i never have i've never fished it and drew i don't think he has either uh so we're talking about unweighted midge type patterns blowing all of your typical tailwater type patterns and uh today uh because of that michael we're gonna do a bit of a challenge um so that being said let me break it down here for you real quick um I'll be running um, unweighted flies, so no bead heads, uh, what your typical tailwater setup would be, uh, indicator or dry fly, and then, you know, having um, your leader built out <clears throat> to your weight, and then to two flies down below that. So I'll break down my rig once we get to the water here. And so that's no beads, no bead heads on my flies. Uh, there might be a little bit of weight built in on maybe on some of my flies, but uh, for the most part, they're unweighted. And Drew's gonna be running uh, bead headed uh, patterns, sticking with your nymphing primarily, although uh, he will be running um, a dry dropper setup if need be in some of these sections because uh, we're dealing with some slow, uh, deeper water and, and I don't want to inhibit him from being able to fish that uh, just by sticking with a Euro Nymph rig. So uh, really the comparison is in between bead heads and size of flies, I guess. Uh, we'll kind of stick with that uh, idea. <laughs> but anyway, I'm excited. I, I Like I said, uh, neither of us have fished uh, small midgy type stuff here. Uh, and so what I'm talking about is anything from really i'm going from a 16 down to uh 22 uh but yeah let's get after it and uh, get to the water and get this challenge going so we're just gonna fish and just see how it compares throughout our day and go from there so come along everybody let's go fish all right so i've got my 10 foot two inch two weight hardy euro nymphing rod and then i've got my standard euro nymphing leader and I, i'm going to start with a all of Quildagon up top with a red butt nymph at the bottom. Both have 2.3 millimeter beads. What size six? Uh, 16s. Okay, cool. With five and a half X tippet. All right, and uh, we're starting in a nice deep pool right here. Uh, it's got a good seam, right going right down the center. Some pretty deep water in there. Uh, we'll see what we've got, got going on. And so my setup, I'm actually running a 10 foot five weight today. Uh, I'm going to run basically what any standard um, nymph rig would consist of. So I'm starting out with a standard taper leader, seven and a half foot uh, taper leader down to uh, 4x. <clears throat> and then from there, uh, right at my indicator here, I spliced on about, oh, I think I did four, uh, sorry, three feet of 5x. So indicator three feet of 5x. I got a knot here, a little splice, so I'm going to put my weight here. I don't have any weight here yet, uh, so I can uh, adjust my weight or, or get my weight suitable to the section of water I'm fishing. I'm going to fish tungsten and putty today. That way I'm able to adjust a fine modify very easily. So it's a triple surgeon's knot right there, and that's going to hold my weight in place. At about 12, 14 inches down, I got my first fly, which is a little red annelid, about a size 18. And then 12, 14 inches below that, I got a little Juju B midge. So both of these are unweighted. So relying so t totally on the on the putty here uh, to get my flies down. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that on there right now. <clears throat> so I like tungsten putty. Uh, one, it's infinitely adjustable, and two, um, it's tungsten, so it's not lead. It's not toxic. 
But I mean, you know, leave enough of this stuff around, it might not be all that good for the environment. So it got me a little, I couldn't reference the size in accordance to bead or, or weight, but I don't know if you can see that. But anyway, that's gonna be my, my size right there. So anyway, uh, I may uh, downsize that or adjust obviously according to depth and speed of current. Uh, but yeah, we'll let Drew have a few runs through here and then I'll give it a go after a bit. Either way, I just hope we turn some fish today. It's a beautiful day. Uh, flow on this river right now is running about 60 CFS daytime temps. I think we're supposed to see low 50s. So we should have some really good conditions. Always looking out for hatches. Uh, we just got on the water, so I haven't seen anything in the way of midges or betas or anything just yet. So, all right, let's see what happens. I'm gonna put a heavier fly on my point. I'm gonna put a an orange tag with a 2.8 millimeter bead on. Try and get down a little bit more. There you are. Nice, good rainbow. Yeah, that's a good looking bow. It's on your the hot tag. Hot tag. Yep. So who, when he just went heavier, got it down a little better. Nice bow. Solid fish. Sweet. Good wild fish too, look like, oh, yeah. or at least a nice holdover mm -hmm. from here. So with these rigs, you always <clears throat> determine your depth from indicator to weight. That's what's gonna be making contact with the bottom and keeping your flies down where they need to be. So I'm gonna start from the bottom end of the pool here, cast up to the top. And let the current ride it down here. Watching my indicator if it dips or dives. That was a little too far in the inside or end of the seam there. I'm gonna keep it a little more on the inside. This is very strange to fish this river with this rig. <laughs> so right now I'm not certain where my flies are under my indicator. So everything's landing linearly upstream, but I'm not, once it starts sinking and going down, I'm not exactly sure where anything is. There we go. That was a super light eat and I could barely see it and I was late. That looked like it was on the red analid. I was definitely delayed on that hook set. It just bobbled a little bit. <clears throat> well, that was a, good sign <laughs> hard to read the strike though all right so we ended up moving uh, we had a brutal uh, first part of our day each of us he landed one fish I turned one fish did not land it uh, so we came up higher we know there's a lot more fish up here and still sticking with the challenge I'm running non bead midge type stuff and Drew's still running uh, bead headed, tight line, indicator, crossover. So, um, all right, well, we'll give it a try up here and see where where we're at. Um, we, we totally need some redemption fish here. So, all right, let's check it out. Okay, so I got a red analyt on there again and the Johnny Flash behind it. Drew's on another one. So far, bead heads three to zero. <laughs> Landed. Oh. There. Oh. <laughs> you have one? It hit it <clears throat> and uh, saw it bump. And then it and then it went down and I set on that and it was too late. I can definitely tell I'm not getting the connection that I would if I had independent flies, meaning they're off tags and independently weighted. I could see that slow take. All right, got one. That one's on the Johnny Flash. 
Very subtle eat. Nymphing. This type of setup, you really gotta pay attention to your indicator. Set on any little thing. You should set on any little thing in general anyway. You keeping track of your hookups too, Drew? Uh, like good solid eats versus... Yeah, I've only had one good solid eat that I missed. So you're at four hits, three landed? Yes, sir. I'm at three, one landed. There's one, that was a little better hit. hit. Again, just getting those flies oriented correctly in the drift. There you go. You still have the little midges on? Yeah, that was on the red anolid. Five hits, two landed. What are you running now, Drew? Oh, uh, the same thing. I just put an indicator on. Oh, okay. Nice. Nice. There we are. <laughs> I was like, hold on, I might, I, I think I see something happening. <laughs> you gotta keep your eyes glued to that indicator uh, with this rig. Nice bow. Good color. Clear fins. Oh. Yeah, that weird green blue. Yeah. Got him? Yep. Nice. Oh, oh. <clears throat> oh, I think I'm tangled. Another one? Yeah. I'm tangled. <laughs> up a little more these fish are holding a little higher in the water column right now taking advantage of low light and Drew's oh. back on one line slip. <laughs> <laughs> a line slipped through my fingers yeah. <laughs> Move my indicator down, bring, trying to bring the flies up a little bit more. There's yeah, quite a few fish suspended in the water column. How deep are you? Uh, I'm about maybe two and a half feet to my first fly, and then another 20 inches or so to my second. Yeah, okay. And the eggs on bottom, and then I have a pink tag on top. I, I got take one. On, I got one on the pink tag. <laughs> there we are, finally. Thank you, fish. Haha, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Can I give you a motor first? Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks. I want to drop 
the rest of my fish. Okay. <laughs> yeah, get the fish in the water, man. <laughs> Stocking truck made it. Just in time for us to leave. So from here on out, no excuse. You should be able to catch fish. <laughs> All right. Well, finished up our day. Um, yeah, it was a tough morning. Uh, stuck to the challenge. I stuck with the small midgy patterns. Right Drew was running beadhead nymphs and indicator uh, <clears throat> rigs with that uh, to help suspend in the deeper, slower stuff. And uh, Euro nymphing, tight line nymphing in the riffles, pockets. Drew definitely, <clears throat> I think, uh, outproduced me with the beadhead setup. Uh, and definitely for sure was able to convert more of those hits into hooked fish and landed fish. Uh, I was still getting eats and, and bites, but not at the same rate. Uh, but the eats that I did have just weren't able to uh, connect. Uh, and I totally believe it was just I didn't have the connection I would have had <clears throat> had my weight been in my fly, keeping contact directly to the indicator. And I think Drew's performance and... and uh, um, number of fish landed proved that. The egg was definitely the top producer here and I put a strike indicator on my cider here for the slower water to suspend it out at a further distance and then it was good. All right so these are the flies that we stuck with uh, through the day. Uh, you can see the midges on here so it's Johnny Flash and the uh, red annelid. Uh, hopefully you guys can see that fairly well. Uh, Johnny Flat, that's a little hard to see, um, chocolate color. And um, Drew is running the egg, ecstasy egg, and a little pink tag. Um, hope you guys can see that okay. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much what we were running today. I wouldn't say that the, the midge game doesn't work here. It's just probably perhaps not my go-to in the fact that if I can get away with bigger flies and even heavier tippet, <clears throat> uh, less components, uh, i.e. external weight, adding tippet segments in between flies. Um, it, right out of the gate, I had forgotten how much of a pain, uh, for me anyway, rigging up an indicator rig, indicator, external weight, two flies below that, splicing up my leader, chopping it up so I can get those configurations and dimensions down. Um, yeah, that was uh, very... Um, uh, what do you, how would you say that? Very uh, inconvenient, <laughs> to say the least, you know, versus having uh, independent flies. When you change one fly, you don't have to take off the other one, especially if it's the, the middle fly or top fly. Um, you don't have to worry about taking weight on and off, moving indicator up and down unless you're suspending uh, rigs. But, you know, you're nymphing, you can adjust all that within the drift itself or just change a fly and adjust your weight that way. So I don't know. I mean, just... Uh, very, very different, but I just truly think I was way behind in the hook set. These fish were taking the fly, spitting it pretty fast without uh, giving much opportunity to set the hook. So, anyway, hopefully that helped you guys. Uh, we had fun. I had fun. Hope you yeah, had a good yeah, time. It was, good. Uh, it was good to get out with Drew again. And uh, yeah, we'll keep getting out, keep getting this, this dude on the water, keep him practicing for worlds. So, <laughs> all right, everybody, in order to find me, uh, Instagram, Facebook, um, YouTube obviously and my time with fly fishing also check out that patreon page drew you can find on Instagram what's your Instagram uh, Drew underscore bone underscore on Instagram all right there you go so uh, please like subscribe hit that bell for notifications when new videos come out or get posted so all right everybody take care we'll see you around the way peace <laughs>